one candle equals a lot of pair value gaps. In other words, one candle tells you everything about what price will do next. And I'll show you today how you can use that to your advantage. We're going to go over four different steps. In those four different steps, the first step is candle variations. So when we have a singular candle, there's two variations that we are dealing with. The first manner on how a candle can form, so the first variation, is a disrespect candle, as I like to call it. This right here is a bullish disrespect candle, and this right here is a bearish disrespect candle. The exact same, just inversed, of course. Now, the characteristics of a disrespect candle is when we have a big body, at least relatively seen to the wicks. So the wicks are significantly smaller on both sides of that candle relatively seen to the overall body of that candle if you want to make this mechanical you can put both the wicks so the top wick and the bottom wick on top of each other that creates a certain length right then if you grab the body of that candle and you put it next to that you just measure which one is longer is the body longer or are the two wicks combined longer if the body is longer that creates a disrespect candle that is the first candle variation and how we can use that to our advantage is exactly what we're going to go over but first we need to go over the second candle variation the respect candle the respect candle variation is when we have one long wick meaning we either have a long wick at the bottom or at the top of the candle so this right here is where we have a long wick at the top right there and this right here is where we have a long wick at the bottom right there Ideally, you want a smaller wick at the opposite. So the opposite wick should be smaller. Whatever the body of the candle does is not super relevant. We're going to go over examples to make it even more clear. Now, if we put them next to each other, so we have the disrespect candle right there, and we have a respect candle right there, both the bullish variations, then what happens in these different candles? So what happens underneath? And what I mean with what happens underneath is this candle can be any time frame right so this can be the weekly can be the one hour can even be a 15 minute candle inside that candle you will have multiple candles on the lower time frame and those multiple lower time frame candles create one bigger higher time frame candle relatively seen by the time frame you are looking at so for example one minute could be the lower time frame to in this case the 15 minute time frame where in that 15 minute time frame you have 15 one minute candles so when for example we have one singular candle that is a disrespect candle what happens on the lower time frame on the lower time frame that can be seen as fair value gaps going higher and the same of course can be said about the bearish variation if we have one singular disrespect candle going lower then that can be seen as multiple fair value gaps going lower on the lower time frame so inside that candle now for the respect candle, this is a little bit different because when we have a respect candle and we have a bullish variation, the bullish variation being a long wick at the bottom. Why? Because a long wick at the bottom is indicating to us that we had fair value gaps going lower right there on the lower time frame at first because we moved lower at first. But afterwards, we moved higher again. So we had bullish fair value gaps going higher. So a long wick at the bottom actually creates a bullish sharp turn. And if you're not sure what a sharp turn is, a bullish sharp turn is when we have bearish fair value gaps going lower, immediately followed or ideally immediately followed by bullish fair value gaps going higher, where the bearish fair value gaps are then used as manipulation gaps. Now, what that exactly looks like in a chart, we will go over as well. Don't worry. And the same can then be said about the bearish respect candle because then we have a long wick at the top, which creates a bearish sharp turn. Bullish fair value gaps going higher first, then followed by bearish fair value gaps going lower. So a disrespect candle means that we have one-sided fair value gaps on the lower time frame, where a respect candle means that we have a sharp turn on the lower time frame, meaning simply said that we have likely a reversal on the lower time frame. Now, this is only the basic understanding, because now we need to understand the third step which is what then becomes the target so where does the next candle want to trade towards so here we are on nasdaq on the weekly time frame again both the market and the time frame is irrelevant it's all fractal meaning it happens on every market 
and fractal as in it happens on every single time frame so i'll show you examples later on how you can use this on the 15 minute time frame to know where you should place your trade on the one minute time frame now if we use the replay tool right here just to train our eyes to see this then the recent candle that we see on the weekly time frame right there what does that look like that looks like a respect candle right now if we use the replay tool right here just to train our eyes again we arrived at the third step the third step being what is the target right now the easiest target you will always have is a previous x low and a previous x high and what i mean by that is a previous candle high a previous candle low the x can be a one hour candle 15 minute candle again it's all fractal right so it can be any time frame but the easiest target is always going to be the previous candle high and the previous candle low right there. So our goal on the weekly time frame right here is simply to predict will we first trade towards the previous candle low or the previous candle high right there? Which side will we reach? Now, if we do this on the weekly like we're doing right now, and we can even do it on the monthly and we just know where the next monthly, weekly, daily candle is going to trade towards that makes it very easy to know what the lower time frame is likely going to do because again the higher the time frame the stronger the time frame so if the weekly wants to continue lower here then the one hour the one minute even will just follow that so right here so in order for us to identify which target we will reach first this previous candle high or the previous candle low we need to determine what type of candle this is this as we know it is a respect candle why because the long wick right there at the top indicates that there's on the lower time frame most likely a sharp turn happening. We are respecting something. What are we respecting? It's exactly what we're also going to go over. So the highest probability thing for price to do right here, the most likely thing for price to do is for to first reach the previous candle low right there, which we eventually see right there afterwards what type of candle are we seeing so let's mark again the easiest targets the easiest targets we have is previous candle high previous candle low what type of candle is this this is a trick question because to get this answer right we actually need to go over the next step but if we were only to look at the candle variations then i would argue personally that this is a disrespect candle right so at first, we could expect lower prices towards the previous candle low right there. And that would become our target. Why that is not the case and why that is a trick question is exactly what we're also going to go over in the next step. Because at this moment in time, I would actually expect higher prices. And I'll tell you why in a little bit. Where we see the next candle moving higher right there. And once that candle closes right there, we again do the same exact thing thing we have this previous candle low right there and this previous candle high what type of candle is this this candle variation again the disrespect candle so with a disrespect candle we are likely going to move towards the same side because it's one-sided fair value gaps the respect candle is a reversal candle where the disrespect candle is just a continuation so here we can expect if we want to continue the first target being this previous candle high right there now this is where we add another target into the mix because after that previous candle high what actually is the next target meaning and when i say target in bullish conditions a target is always a premium rate in bearish conditions a target is always a discount rate so at that moment in time what is the next premium rate that price will reach well above this previous candle high right there is this swing high right there which is the next premium rate so if we reach this previous candle high right there and we want to reach the next premium rate then the next premium rate is that one right there how can we know if it wants to reach the next premium rate again by looking at the overall candle how it wants to form on the lower time frame now after we see this right here i want to zoom out to the monthly time frame to show you something to show you how fractal this is if we look at the monthly time frame and on the monthly time frame, we see this candle right here. What is the most recent candle doing right there? That is, again, a disrespect candle. So that's one-sided fair value gaps on the lower time frame inside that candle. So what can it likely reach for? This candle high right there. It's the first, that's the easiest target. After that, what can be the next target? The next target can be that swing high right there. 
Perfect. So in a very simple process, you have determined the bytes, actually, because now you have determined the direction and the draw liquidity. Now our job is to find the PD array where we actually want to continue higher from. So if we want to reach this target and that target, then where can we continue higher from? This is now where you can go into the lower time frames, meaning you want to go into time frames below the candle you are looking at. And if you're looking at the monthly time frame right here or any time frame, then ideally you want to go a maximum of three time frames below that. So in order for us to continue higher, what do we need? We actually need a discount array, right? We need some kind of support that we can continue higher from. Now, do we have a monthly fair value gap, monthly order block sitting right there, which we can continue higher from before we reach this previous candle high and that high? Yes, we have an order block sitting right there, but it's quite unrealistic for price to make a retracement like this first to then continue higher. I think we will reach the targets first right there before we even make a retracement, especially if the target is that close right there. So what can we do? We can go down a time frame to now find a new discount rate that we can continue higher from. Well, what do we see here? We again have this previous month's high right there and the swing high right there. We now arrive at step number four, where we need to go over the different PD rates. Again, the different PD rates is not that difficult. It's just that we need to determine which PD rates are we using, because I do not like to have a lot of PD rates on my chart. I think it loses the accuracy of trading if you use a lot of PD rates. So I like to stick to fair value gaps, of course, mitigation blocks, breaker blocks, order blocks, swing highs, swing lows, and previous candle highs, previous candle lows. And that might already seem like quite a lot to someone who is not familiar with all the hundreds of PD rates out there. I can understand that, but that gives me the most accuracy. So if we mark out all those PD rates, then here we have a fair value gap right there. We have a fair value gap right there. We have a fair value area sitting right there in the form of that mitigation block, which is nicely overlapping with the fair value gap itself as well. I will actually refine this fair value gap towards the overlapping gap. And the reason I do that, if you have not seen previous videos, is because if we are not going to continue higher off the first fair value gap, then the second standalone fair value gap it's also something we are likely not going to continue higher from. And the reason for that is because it's the same. This is one for value gap. That's also this area right there that I had just previously marked. The area of the fair value gap between that high is also one. If price disrespects the first standalone fair value gap, then it will reach for the overlapping fair value gap, which is the overlapping part where we create a mitigation block, break block or an order block. All right, so now we have a good ID where we can continue higher from on the weekly time frame, which also means that you do not need to go into the daily into the four hour right now. If by going down the first time frame, you have now found the PD rate where price can continue higher or lower from, then that's enough. You do not need to go down another time frame because that will just add to the confusion. Where again, the higher time frame is the strongest. So if we are reaching any fair value gaps, then it's likely going to be the weekly fair value gaps right there. So looking at this, we can now apply the same thing, right? Because we have these PD rays right there. We have these PD rays right there. And what I mean with playing around with them is that if we look at the most recent weekly candle right there, we have a weekly fair value gap sitting right there, which we can continue higher from. We have these weekly overlapping parts right there, which we can also continue higher from. We then have the recent candle being a respect candle. Well, what actually is it respecting? Well, in this case, it's respecting this previous candle high right there, which indicates to us that it might be sweeping that. So for us, the highest probability thing for it to do is most likely to continue lower first before we then continue higher. So what can you do on the lower time frame right there? Well, on the lower time frame, now the story becomes the exact same thing. Because if now the target is first the previous candle low right there, then find any fair value gap on the lower time frame going lower. Of course, again, stick to that maximum of three time frame rule, meaning you don't go to the one minute time frame to find a one minute fair value gap lower. And then you can simply target this fair value gap. If that one does not hold, then this becomes the target right there. Now, before we dive into the lower time frame right there, let's first go over this example. Otherwise, it might be a bit too overwhelming. Now, eventually, what do we do? 
we come into that area right there and the reason i expected that next candle to be an up candle right there and again yes of course this is hindsight but we also do this every single time live in the money making team and also even for free on the sunday weekly forecast since at first this of course looks like a disrespect candle the down candle but we are now coming into actually pd race discount race that we can continue higher from so it changes the story because now this wick becomes suspicious right it's not necessarily a wick where you would expect lower prices from well standalone that candle alone yes but in combination with now understanding that we are coming into a discount rate that wick can already be seen as some kind of respect actually but of course relatively seen the wick is still quite small so the next candle right there if it wants to continue higher it will again show the same signs that it is doing right there and then eventually what we're seeing is that we continue higher reaching that first high and then afterwards we can also reach this high sitting right there so then it becomes the same story because once we reach that high we are also opening up in a new month and if we delete all the old price action and we go back towards the monthly time frame on the monthly time frame right here we are seeing a pretty 50 50 candle i would argue and the reason i state that is because we have a long wick at the bottom right there and also a long wick at the top right there so now it becomes important to read what the next weekly candles want to do right there so with the next weekly candles what are we actually looking at well we are simply looking at the exact same thing again we are now currently respecting this swing high right there that swing high is what we are respecting by the weekly candle if we actually want to continue higher then we will continue higher off of this weekly fervile gap that we have sitting right there and we can even see that the previous candle by the respect of that swing high is a beautiful setup to actually move back into the weekly fervile gap and yes i know i have said in previous videos as well breakaway gaps are formed if we close above a previous candle high so for example this candle that third candle right there closes above this line right there if it does that then as a general rule of thumb it's a breakaway gap but what i've also mentioned during those videos this right here is the most important part because right here this candle the most recent candle that third candle does not support the idea of that being a breakaway gap so the general rule of thumb is an extremely general rule of thumb and this is why it's so important to understand that making your trading fully mechanical is usually detrimental because there's a lot of variables actually going into it. So right here, we can trade into the weekly value gap. And from that weekly value gap, we are again seeing right there that on the lower time frame, we most likely have a reversal sharp turn right there to continue higher off of that towards than this previous candle high. So from the previous candle low into the fair value gap, previous candle high right there is now the target and then afterwards we see again the same story where this is now a disrespect candle so the previous candle high again the target now this now becomes a swing high which is also the target and that is how this continues and continues and continues so how can we now capitalize on this as well so by looking at this weekly value gap if we now go into the lower time frame then we can see that we are indeed coming into this weekly value gap creating a sharp turn meaning we have a fair value gap in right there fair value gap out this fair value gap out right there what does that do coming into the breaker high as well well by looking at this singular candle right there we can see the exact same thing happening again so do we need to wait for this candle to actually close before we can trade the next candle you don't necessarily need to the next candle is higher probability to trade as in it's easier to understand what it will likely do because we already have the story of the previous candle so if we want to trade the next candle right there then what do we see well we have these two targets right there previous candle low previous candle high ideally before we reach this previous candle high which we will likely reach first of course yes i can see hindsight of course because this candle variation is respect candle right there so we are likely reaching the high first right there it's a bullish candle so before we reach this previous candle high we want to ideally have fair value gap that is located in this area right there that we can continue higher from before we have reached this previous candle high so what does that look like well right here 
if we first go into the one hour time frame to find our fair value gap. Do we have any fair value gap before we reach this high right there? No. Okay, let's go down another time frame. On the 15 minute time frame, do we have any fair value gap that we created before we reach this high right there? Yes, we have this 15 minute fair value gap sitting right there, which is also our what? Our sharp turn. Now, this happened to sting into that fair value gap in the next candle. So during the next four hour candle cycle. But if it happened during the same candle, that's also perfectly fine, right? That's also a perfect entry. So that really depends if you want to wait for one candle to close or if you already want to go into the lower time frame. Where here on the 15 minutes, that itself can already be an entry, of course. Even the four hour could have already been an entry itself, depending on what type of trader you want to be. Now here on the 15 minute, again, everything is the same, right? We again have the same previous candle high sitting right there, previous candle low sitting right there as well even whilst this respect candle is forming right there all you need is that one minute sharp turn going higher to then place a trade to target this line because this was the four hour previous candle high unfortunately i can't go into the one minute time frame on this example so i'll show you another example where here we see the exact same thing if we start off with what type of candle is this this is a respect candle but what actually is it respecting it is respecting a swing high sitting right there with the top wick. So if we mark out both sides of the candle, what can it reach first? Most likely and the highest probability thing is for it to reach first the bottom. So the previous candle low right there. If we leave that on, then besides that, we also have, of course, this four hour value gap, which we can eventually reach right there. Now, what we need to do is find again a fair value gap that is a bearish fair value gap so we can take a trade to target the previous candle low and potentially the four hour fair value gap sitting right there so on the one hour we don't see a one hour fair value gap just yet all right on the 15 minute we have a 15 minute fair value gap sitting right there and off of that 15 minute fair value gap right there you can now even go into again the one minute time frame because the one minute time frame right here already has this fair value gap continuing lower right there this fair value gap continuing lower right there which eventually we continue lower off of the overall breaker that we see towards the left again you don't need to enter in the fair value gap itself now this method here is actually what i use a lot of times as well which we touched on briefly in market mastery when you would enter on the creation of a fair value gap so for example this fair value gap right there is being created once this third candle right there closes that third candle is a disrespect candle from what i'm currently seeing right there meaning that the next candle can already continue lower at that moment in time i can already allow myself if the rr is worth it meaning where is the overall next target or well, the previous candle low on the 15 minute was this next candle right here and by the time that candle closes, it is now this candle right there. Then this swing low sitting right there. And afterwards, of course, this was the first major target, that four hour candle low. So if we go back into the one minute and on the one minute covering these highs, is it now easy for price to reach a one to two before the first major target? Yes, it is because the one to two is already there. Perfect. Then the creation of the value gap right there won't give me that much rr where i'm actually dependent on it so i can already enter on the creation of the fair value gap itself now this is actually the tip of the iceberg on what we call candle science in the money making team in the mentorship now if you now start to combine this with other concepts that we already touched on here on youtube you can see how much more sense they start to make so i would highly advise to also watch this next video because then it will make a lot more sense as well all right perfect Thank you.